Hey lovely people and welcome back and welcome back to a relaxing of the lockdown and the introduction of COVID-19 tracking. So today let's explore the technology and the software solutions that are being proposed to track the virus. I am sure many people don't like centralized tracking software, but in this case, it might work. Viruses obviously are passed on from person to person, and there's cluster cases where, for example, in our region, there was a funeral, and sadly, over 120 people came in contact with one person also at the funeral who had the infection. And of course, a number of people who also attended the funeral have become ill. And our local authorities are doing their best to try and track people down by name to warn them that they might need to self-quarantine because they were in proximity to an infected person. But how do you do the whole country? Well, Google Apple and independent software developers are proposing a scheme for a whole nation to track everyone to warn you if you've been close to a person that's ill. There are three basic approaches to doing this and they all have issues and they're worth exploring. First of all, they all only work if you have a mobile phone, and we'll get onto that being an issue in a minute. But the first one's very simple. It will track every mobile phone user down to the cell, the phone cell that they're in. Not very accurate, but pretty easy to do. And in fact, it already happens. A more sophisticated and this time not anonymous scheme is to track everybody using GPS. All modern mobile phones have a GPS chip, and even if you switch it off, you actually can't totally disable it. If you noticed, if you say no tracking, it still works for a 911 or 999 emergency calls that knows your location, so you can't switch it off unless you smash it with a hammer. But the GPS scheme has a major flaw. GPS does not really work accurately in buildings. So if you live in an apartment block, a high rise, they won't know where you are. And it doesn't really work inside, you know, where you work. So you work in a big metal box factory. It's not going to track you. But there's a third scheme and it's been developed incredibly fast. And I think it's good and I think it's very clever, but it still has some issues. Let me describe the Bluetooth tracking idea. This scheme is truly anonymous. It doesn't need to know who you are. Most, and I say most, mobile phones have Bluetooth. I guess you need to enable it if you can turn it on or off. Bluetooth works by very short distance communication between other Bluetooth devices. So as you're walking around, your Bluetooth device will ping, ping other people near you. If you then come down with a virus that you've caught somewhere randomly, you register, self-register on the scheme, on the software that I am sadly infected. So in the background, there's a database that has collected all the people that you've been in proximity to. And now that you're ill, it tells them and they can also self isolate. I think it's clever. I like that it's anonymous, but there are a couple of issues that people have raised. And I think they're quite funny, actually. They're actually going to do the Bluetooth scheme in the Isle of Wight, which is a self-contained island off the south coast of England, where most people have mobile phones, but not everybody. I, for example, don't have a Bluetooth mobile phone. I don't like being phoned. <laughs> but one person phoned in a message to the helpline and said, how do I install the software on my fax machine? I think they were joking, but at any rate, I mean, that is an issue. And then the second person says something very smart. I work in a factory where we have to leave our mobile phones in our lockers, in a row of lockers. So while we're at work, all our phones are going to go bing, 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 bing. 
in the lockers, but we're not necessarily in proximity to the person, we're only in proximity to their phone. I might get an alert if somebody who owns the anonymous phone in the locker next door gets the virus. And that's a good point, so they hadn't really figured that out. So what do you think of tracking the entire population using your phone? Is it the start of a slippery slope? Do we trust Apple, Google and our governments to actually keep it anonymous? If they do identify you as a risk, will you be shunned by society and maybe blocked by some software on your phone to enter a store or go to work or do things? It raises some big issues. So I guess we have to decide whether we have a choice or not. It's another issue. But if we do have a choice, do we like virus software tracking? Let me know because the truth is out there.